Hello and welcome to another video working on my mountain bike. In the last video we did a full rebuild on this RockShox Pike. We ran into some issues while bleeding the damper due to an air leak in the system. Since this fork is almost a decade old at this point, it's not unreasonable to think that some of the rubber components internal to the fork have potentially hardened up over time and are now allowing air to leak. We're going to be doing a more comprehensive rebuild of the damper including replacing the bladder as well as some of the more internal o-rings that could have potentially gone bad over time. Here on the workbench we have a look at the parts that we'll be replacing. On the left we have a brand new bladder and then some of the o-rings that are buried a little bit deeper inside of the damper. RockShox used to include instructions for performing this service but at some point they removed these steps. I'm guessing this is because I stopped offering these replacement parts. Nonetheless, I was able to find an older revision of that service manual and looking through eBay, find a seller offering this rebuild kit. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the fork from the bike and I'll check back in once I have it out. So now I'm going to start working toward pulling the damper out of the fork. In truth, I probably could have done this with the fork still on the bike. But the thumbnail that I wanted to use for this video required the fork to come out, so out it came. So first we're going to remove the air from the air spring. Next we're going to remove the compression adjuster knobs and the rebound adjuster knob. Now we'll loosen the damper top cap. So if we've done everything right at this point, the damper assembly should be able to lift right out of the fork. Keep in mind there is some oil in the lower, so you'll want to have either a bucket or a rag underneath to catch that oil that comes out. All right, now we'll remove the damper seal head. This is supposed to be replaced as part of servicing the damper, but in this case, given that I just did the full service on this fork a few weeks ago, I'm going to reuse this and then a few other components throughout. I'm going to grab a rag here just for any oil that might overflow. Then we'll just pour out this oil. For the next steps, we'll be working on the bench vise. So we're using these flats of the coupler that mounts the bladder to the cartridge tube to hold the damper assembly in this vise. As you can see, I had to do a bit of gymnastics to get a setup that worked, but I think that what we have here will do the trick. So now we can remove the cartridge tube from the damper assembly. Now we'll remove the compression piston assembly. You want to do this over some kind of a container as some amount of suspension oil will overflow when we do this. Okay. Well, it's out. There's oil everywhere, but it's out. We'll just replace the O-ring on the compression piston assembly. We have the top cap assembly mounted back into this vise. I should note that you should be using aluminum soft jaws for all of the procedures here to avoid damaging any of the components from the fork. The first thing we're going to do here is remove the retaining ring from the low speed adjuster knob. Now remove the low speed adjuster knob. There's a O-ring on this that we're going to replace. I've typically been putting SRAM butter on all of the O-rings before I reinstall them. Since this is such a small O-ring though, I'm just going to dip it in suspension oil before putting it back on. So my retaining ring pliers are a little bit too big for this ring, so that just barely worked. Hopefully I'll be able to get it back in okay. Now we'll remove the low speed compression needle. Now we'll use needle nose pliers to remove the compression cam assembly. We'll replace a couple O-rings on this cam assembly.
Now we'll loosen this top cap assembly. On this step, either the top cap assembly can loosen or the coupler can loosen. And then depending on which one of those happens, we'll dictate how we proceed with rebuilding the bladder assembly. So it looks like the top cap assembly is what's going to end up coming off. Now we'll mount a 5 8 hex bit into the vise, and that will allow the bladder assembly to sit on there. And now we'll remove the coupler. If this had come off in the previous step, it would be the same thing, but you would have the bladder assembly flipped, the top cap would still be on there, and you would be using a 30 millimeter socket to remove the top cap assembly. And then the coupler and the top cap assembly each have an O-ring that we'll replace. So RockShox actually specifies not to apply grease to this O-ring. So I'm just going to wipe off the grease that I already applied. Now we can just remove the bladder from the bladder sleeve. Then we'll just clean up the bladder sleeve a bit. At this point, if you'll be reusing the same bladder, you should also be inspecting it for any cracks or tears. So now we'll start putting everything back together. First, the new bladder. I was a little bit surprised at how pliable the old bladder still felt. Quite frankly, the new bladder and the old bladder felt essentially the same. So I'm not very hopeful that that's where my problem lied. What I'm hoping is that some of the O-rings had just hardened up or gotten weak as they've presumably been installed for the better part of 10 years. We'll want to center this bladder on the bladder sleeve. And then we'll thread on the coupler and the top cap assembly. And we'll apply a liberal amount of SRAM butter to both ends of the bladder. This is to ensure that the bladder doesn't twist as we thread on the coupler and the top cap. So now we'll install the coupler. Now I pray that I don't twist the bladder. Based on my experience with the coupler, I'm not even going to try to start this by hand. And again, just making sure that that bladder doesn't start to twist. Final torque is 40 to 50 inch pounds, which is hilariously low for a 30 millimeter fitting. So I have my quarter inch drive torque wrench with two adapters going to my half inch drive 30 millimeter socket. Now we'll start reassembling the rest of the damper assembly, starting with the seal head and damper shaft. Now we'll refill the cartridge tube with suspension oil and we'll begin the bleed process. So for this, we'll need to fully open the rebound setting on the fork. Since we don't have the adjuster knob attached, we'll just use a hex wrench to reach in and make the adjustment. We'll start by filling the cartridge tube about halfway with RockShox 3 weight suspension oil. With the cartridge tube half full, we're going to cover the top with our palm and then cycle the damper shaft a few times. This will pre-bleed some air from the system. And then with the damper shaft in the fully extended position, we can finish filling this cartridge tube. Now we'll reinstall the compression piston assembly. So now we'll clean up the threads on the cartridge tube. And then we'll do the same thing on the threads for the coupler. We're going to be applying some thread locker to this interface. We want to make sure that it's clean. So we'll apply just a small amount of Loctite 242 to the threads of the coupler. And then we'll thread the bladder assembly onto the cartridge tube. Final torque for the coupler is 9 to 10 newton meters. To do that, I would need a 25 millimeter crowfoot socket, which I do not have. So I'm just going to do it by hand using an open end wrench. 
It should be good. And then we're going to fill this top cap about halfway with suspension fluid. And then we'll cycle the damper shaft a few times in order to pre-bleed air from the system. And then we'll finish filling the top cap with suspension oil. We'll reinstall the compression cam assembly. We want to have a rag just to catch any oil that overflows. Now we'll turn the cam assembly until it locks in with the piston assembly. Now we'll reinstall the outer retaining ring. So now it's time to bleed the damper. For this, we'll need a special bleed syringe, and we're going to fill it about halfway with suspension fluid. I've also threaded the bottom bolt back onto the damper shaft. So we'll start by threading the bleed syringe onto the top cap. You'll need the compression adjuster in the fully open position. RockShox specifies a 15 millimeter cone wrench for doing this, but I've found that a regular combination wrench works just fine. Turning it all the way in the counterclockwise direction moves it toward the fully open position. So we'll start by pressurizing the damper system. To do this, we want the shaft in the fully extended position and we'll depress the plunger on the syringe to add pressure to the system. You'll notice the bladder extending slightly when you do this. This is normal. And now with the syringe depressed, you can cycle the damper a few times. This will help to dislodge any air bubbles. The next step is to pull a vacuum, and this is actually what's going to draw out any air that's in the system. So to do that, we're going to simultaneously pull up on the syringe head while pushing in the damper shaft. Surprisingly, not too many air bubbles came out that time. We definitely got a few small ones. We're going to repeat that process a number of times until we see no additional air coming out of the shock. And at that point, we'll be convinced that we effectively bled the damper. So that time we got much more significant amount of air coming out of the damper, which is a lot closer to what I expect during this portion. Last time I did the rebuild on this fork, I probably repeated this for maybe two hours, and I was still seeing essentially this same amount of air come out of the damper. And at that point, I knew I must have some other problem going on. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen this time, and replacing the bladder in some of those internal O-rings has resolved whatever air leak we had in the system previously. Unfortunately, after spending a couple of hours trying to bleed the damper, I'm seeing similar results to what I was seeing last time. And I think I've concluded that the issue is not in fact with the bladder, but rather with the seal head. There's a lot of play in this damper shaft. And what I found is that if I moved the damper shaft while the damper was under a vacuum, I would subsequently see a lot of air coming out of the damper. If, however, I only moved the damper shaft while the damper was pressurized, I didn't see a lot of this air. The earliest examples of this fork feature a different seal head design that is known to leak. The rebuild kits at this point come with the upgraded seal head design, and that's what I've installed here. But it's possible that there are other components on this fork that are resulting in air leakage. At this point, I'm going to move forward with reassembling the fork. And I guess my options are either to live with it or potentially upgrade to a Charger 2.1. But at the price point for that upgrade kit, the more sensible option is likely to just replace the fork. Install the low speed compression needle. So we'll turn clockwise until it stops. and then we'll back off a quarter of a turn. Now the low speed compression adjuster and the retaining ring. And with that, we can go ahead and clean up the damper assembly and reinstall it on the fork.
In order to fully install the damper into the fork, we'll need to extend these lowers. So we'll dislodge the press fit from the air spring shaft. We have the fork angled up like this so that oil doesn't spill out of the bottom once we dislodge that press fit. And that ought to give us enough room to install the damper. So we're doing this a little bit out of order relative to what the service manual specifies, just because the service manual is based off doing the full rebuild. So at this point, we'll reinstall the lower oil into the damper side. Then we'll compress the lowers until we see the air spring shaft and the damper shaft through these bottom holes, and then we can install the bottom bolts. And then while we're here, we'll reinstall the rebound adjuster nut. Now we'll reinstall the compression adjuster knobs. Put the long tab facing toward the front of the fork. Now we'll just add air back into the fork and we'll be all set. So there we go, the bike's all put back together. That's it for the bladder rebuild on this Charger 1 damper. Unfortunately, it wasn't the exact result that we wanted, as I believe we still have some issues with the damper seal head. So next step for this bike is presumably either to ride it as is, upgrade to a Charger 2, or replace the fork. If anyone has experience dealing with this issue on their fork, feel free to leave something down in the comments telling me what you did about it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.